investment. So this is being billed as a title eliminator ballot. Have you heard anything as much as if you get the win here that you get the next shot at the title? Has the UFC said anything to you about that? Not at all. I think similar to myself, they don't really look past the next fight. And I haven't really considered anything past this Saturday. Jermaine is the number one contender, so there's certain implications there. But at the same time, 135 is a very strange division right now. We have a lot of high-ranking women coming back from either pregnancy or injury. We have a two-division champ who wants to go back and forth, so who knows where it's going to go. What do you think about that with the champ, you know, defending this belt now, the next one maybe she's going to be jumping on? Is that something that kind of is a little upsetting you, that, that the division is in that sort of position right now? Not at all. I have not thought about anything besides this fight on Saturday, so that's where my whole focus is. We'll see after that. Well, speaking of focus, I mean, you're coming in undefeated. You know, what's been the secret to your success? The secret to my success has, I think, has been the same with my one team the entire time. I've never gotten off track. We've never gotten off track. We always have one goal in mind. I've had no issues with jumping around, nothing like that. So I think it's really just been staying on course and with people that I trust. Speaking of team, I was uh, Jungi just put up a story talking about your team, and one of the unique things I thought about uh, the, the way that your team works is that most of the fighters don't pay to initially go there. Can you explain a little bit about the gym and maybe tell us why it's so great? Yeah, so when you're a fighter, you get absolutely reamed by everybody as far as um, payment goes. Everybody wants a piece. So with us, it's management, it's training, it's everything in-house with MMA Gold except you don't get charged, and you only get charged 5% when you make it to the pro leagues. You really can't ask for more. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, speaking of just going back to your last fight, Sajara, I mean, you were really pushed to the limit on that. And in fact, it looked like maybe uh, some people were thinking that the fight could have went the other way. But what did you learn about yourself after such a tough fight? That I could make it through a three-round banker and come out on top. That was a tough fight. I expected it to be tough, and I'm really glad I had that opportunity. So they come at you with Jermaine. What was your initial thoughts when they come and said, hey, this is your opponent? Well, it was kind of a weird one because I wasn't expecting a call as soon as I got it. It was only nine or ten days after my previous fight. And uh, they called for Jermaine. It's like, okay, I expected that. In six weeks, like, wait a second, it's got to be Sacramento. They want you to headline Sacramento. All right, let's do this. So I'm pretty excited about it. Well, break her down for us. Where is she dangerous? I mean, I, she had the title at one time, kind of stepped away, but where is she dangerous? Jermaine is a world-class striker. She's very good at it, and I think she's been doing it about as long as I've been alive. So that is definitely uh, where she excels. What does, it, what does it say when you go and you know somebody has that much experience? Are you able to pull something out that maybe she hasn't seen before? We'll have to see on Saturday. Speaking on Saturday, keys to the victory. What things need to happen for you to make sure you get your hand raised? I just had to go out and execute my game plan better than she does. What does it mean for you to just be here headlining an event close to your hometown? I mean, uh, coming back here to Sacramento, how special is it for you? It's pretty incredible because the last time I fought here as an amateur. So it's pretty strange and bizarre that when I finally come back to Sacramento, it's to headline a UFC card. So it's pretty cool. Does, did, did you like envision this for yourself or are you still kind of taking it all in? No, I never thought anything like this would happen, and I certainly didn't think I'd be headlining anything this soon. I fought my last fight. It was like, okay, we're to chill for a while. Not so much. What is that regimen for you? I mean, you're only 24 years old. I mean, you have this world-class mentality. A lot of people are still kind of like, you know, coming off a party boat and have a series and like that, and you're training for a UFC bout. What is that like? Well, this is my job. It's what I love to do, but it's also my job. Um, and people get very, very head casey in this sport when you really shouldn't. It's like if you're an extremely good accountant, you're confident in yourself. You're an extremely good, I don't know, driver, you're confident in yourself. This is what I do, and you can't really get head casey. You can't get off track and go do something else for weeks on end. It's what we do to make money. You have to stay here and grind, really. What does it mean to just be co-main eventing with Uriah, and what does he mean to this hometown and even you coming from this area? Well, that was pretty bizarre, because I actually come from a little camp where we've been rivals for a long time. And I, obviously, as most people in this area, it's like, okay, Uriah's coming back, then I have him headlining it. Not so much. So it's kind of weird. 